At CERCLAC, we all love food. Every day, we take the time to cook and eat a nice lunch together. It's a conscious break from work, and we really enjoy this. You know, it's a moment for which we rarely compromise, because we all really love it. The way people cook also says a lot about their personality. You know, do they use a recipe, or do they improvise while cooking? What do they do when an ingredient is missing? It's really interesting. You should try it out. We now even use it as a hiring process for new team members at CERCLAC. Probably now you ask yourselves, why is he talking about lunchtime at CERCLAC? I generally do believe it makes a huge difference in how we do things. At CERCLAC, we are developing a prosthetic leg system. There are different ways in how you can do that, and I believe what makes us unique is the way we choose to do it. There are many great ideas, but we can make a difference in how we transform them into reality. This is where the magic happens. So let me take you on the journey of this transformation. And to do that, we need to have a look at the challenges that amputees face in everyday life. And to, to, that, to do that, I want to introduce you to activist, lawyer, and amazing friend of ours, Charlotte Kangume from Uganda. Charlie injured her left leg in an accident with a car so badly that they had to amputate it in a hospital in Kampala. From this moment on, Charlie was confronted with the challenges of having lost a limp in daily life, and she had to learn from scratch on how to handle them. Things like going for a walk, or shopping for groceries at the market in Kampala, or just taking the bus. All of these activities required a new way of doing or left her dependent on the support of others. Since from this moment on, she was bound to crutches to move around. One way to regain her self-determined mobility was to get a prosthesis. A prosthesis is an assist assistive device that replaces the lost limb. In Charlie's case, her left leg. It needs to be adjusted by a so-called prosthetists to make sure the prosthesis is aligned correctly to the body and comfortable to use for the amputees. But Charlie faced the fact that prosthetic care is extremely expensive. She could not afford the high quality prosthetics and the ones she could pay for were functionally limited or unreliable in terms of quality. So she had no choice but to continue to use the crutches to move around remaining restricted in her mobility. Charlie's story is one of millions. There are 65 million people worldwide who live with an amputation. This equals almost the entire population of France. Imagine every person in France having lost a leg. Significant number of people. In reality, the majority of them, of course, don't live in France, but in low to middle income countries around the globe. 90% of them do not have access to prosthetic care because they face the same challenges as Charlie did. What adds to this problem is there are almost no options of locally produced prosthetic components, and none of them are sustainable. So the hospitals are forced to import the prosthetic material from afar and to throw away damaged prosthetics because they are not repairable. So as you see, there's a huge gap between the need and supply of prosthetics. The first time I heard about these challenges, I was a student of the industrial design program at the Zurich University of the Arts, and together with my friend and classmate Fabian, we were doing research for our topic of the bachelor's degree project. We were generally very open about the topic, but we had one important criteria. The project should have a positive impact on people and the environment. At the same time, both of us were really fascinated ab about plastic, a material with infinite applications, but at the same time, completely misused in single-use products and therefore harmful to the environment, humans, and animals. 
So with these two aspects in mind and through connections to East Africa, we came across the challenges of prosthetic care. And it was also the moment when we made the link between recycled plastic and prosthesis. Shortly after, we traveled to Kenya with the idea in mind to produce an affordable prosthetic leg made out of recycled plastic and share this idea with amputees, prosthetists, and plastic manufacturers. It very quickly became clear that this idea has an enormous potential for positive change. The question was, how can we transform this idea into reality? Almost four years have passed since this moment, and together with the international and very interdisciplinary team, we have founded CIRCLAC, a Swiss East African social enterprise and spin-off of the Zurich University of the Arts. Much of what we do revolves around the how. How can we create a prosthetic solution that is not only sustainable for our users and the environment, but also sustainable in an economic sense? How can we establish an ecosystem that empowers amputees to live an independent and self-determined life? And how can we make our prosthetic solution accessible to more people in need? It was clear that the, the challenges of prosthetic care can only be solved with a holistic approach. And together with a strong ecosystem of stakeholders acting on different levels. So therefore, at CIRCLAC, we focus on three main pillars. First, the development of a high-quality yet affordable product, the establishment of a social business around it, and the empowerment of amputees while increasing their access. So the initial question of the first pillar was, how should a prosthetic leg designed for amputees living in East Africa look like? For us, it was clear that this question can only be found by carefully listening to the users and involving them into our process. On one hand, these are the amputees, like Charlie, the ones that will ultimately wear the prosthetic. And on the other hand, the prosthetists, the ones that align, fix, and repair the prosthetics in order to recreate the self-determined mobility of the amputees. So in close collaboration with amputees both in Switzerland and in East Africa, we started to develop the CIRCLAC. We wanted its characteristics and functionalities to truly fit the amputees' needs, also in terms of looks. But this was a tricky one. What should a replacement of a lost limb of yours look like? Or even more importantly, how should it make you feel? These questions have answers which are strongly influenced by cultural and social dynamics. Of course, we want to design a prosthetic leg which looks amazing and boosts the confidence of people wearing it. But the fact is, amputees still face severe stigmatization and discrimination in daily life. Therefore, many amputees want to hide their prosthetic. So, on one hand, we want to acknowledge the fact that there is discrimination and provide a solution which not constantly exposes the amputees to it. But on the other hand, we also deliberately want to stand up against the status quo and create a solution which fosters inclusivity and celebrates diversity. The result of that is manifested in the latest prototype of the CIRCLAC. Next to the functional and aesthetical requirements of the CIRCLAC, the principles of circular economy are a crucial part of the design. This entails topics such as durability, recyclability, and the sustainable sourcing of materials. So alongside the development of the prosthetic, we started to think about the system around it, which are actually the activities of the second pillar at CIRCLAC. How can we create a sustainable model that enables amputees to get access to the CIRCLAC? After analyzing the ecosystem of prosthetic care in East Africa, it became very quickly clear that to generate long-term, scalable impact, we need to build up a healthy and financially self-sustaining business. But obviously, to reach this goal, we need time and resources already from the beginning. 
This is very challenging in a system where profit is the driver of the market. What is needed here are pioneer entities and individuals that have the courage to support visions and believe that creating impact should be an integral part of every business. From this perspective, the profit becomes a tool to unlock the impact instead of being the main goal. It's really a shift of perspective. We are truly lucky that the development of Circlec has been and is being supported by such pioneers, namely foundations and programs who believe in us and the vision of freedom of mobility for everyone. The relative affordability of the Circlec is key in accomplishing this vision. And at the same time, one of the biggest challenges. Although the circle is designed to be affordable, its price may still be too expensive for many amputees. At the same time, there is a great stigma around amputations, a high degree of misinformation and a huge lack of resources. This, of course, has a further negative impact on the mental and physical health of amputees. This is why um, we want to change that, because it's a super complex challenge again. And with the activities of the third pillar at CIRCLEC, we want to tackle them. The goals are to increase accessibility, both in financial means and empowerment programs for amputees. Losing a limb drastically changes the life of a person and their community, but the right type of care really can make a difference. So, Doing all these activities of the three pillars that I just mentioned really requires a badass team. It still blows my mind that these crazy people decided to dedicate most of their time, skills, and full power into the development of CIRCLEC. It's clear that every idea needs a dedicated and professional team to transform it into reality, but again, it's about the how. We constantly challenge each other to reflect on us. How do we want to work? Which values do we want to foster as a team? In which structure do we want to work? Do we want to work in a hierarchical structure? If yes, why? And if not, how can we break it up? These questions started a long process of transformation and ultimately led to the result that we now work in a non-hierarchical structure with CIRCLEC. But far more interesting that the result itself was the process. We had truly inspiring discussions and thought processes that had a stronger impact on the well-being and performance of our team. We learned that only if everyone pushes into the same direction, we can achieve big dreams. And these dreams we surely have. With CIRCLEC, we want to shape prosthetic care in a way that ultimately everyone has access to freedom of mobility. We feel really lucky that also Charlie is pushing us to reach this goal with her energetic way of being and her inputs. And we cannot wait to see her walking around with one of the first CIRCLECs that will soon be produced in Nairobi. It's something that still blows my mind, and I'm so happy that she is part of our movement. And in this photo, you see her as one of the faces of the Bold Moves campaign, with which we celebrate people and institutions who dare to be different. To end this talk, I want to come back to something I mentioned in the beginning. There are many great ideas, but we can make a difference in how we transform them into reality. This is where the magic happens. Thank you. <laughs>